Hello, and welcome to the last presentation of the year with the Living Memory Association. Today, through photographs and memories, we remember one of the coldest winters ever to come to Britain, the Big Freeze of 1963. We will also look at photos and hear memories from other snowy winters over the years. We start with a photograph from the Scotsman, showing the now infamous storm of the winters of 1962 to 1963. December 1962 gave parts of Scotland a white Christmas. Glasgow received its first snowfall on Christmas Day since the post-war period. However, it, be, it was the early days of 1963 that were characterized by clear skies and plunging temperatures, with the coldest recorded temperature of minus 22.2 logged in Braemar. After the cold weather reached the UK on the 22nd of December 1962, snow fell across Scotland on Christmas Eve before sweeping south. The Arctic weather didn't relent until March 1963. As we see in this photograph, storms reappear for Easter, hitting all the holidays then. This photo, taken in Edinburgh, shows a woman struggling against the icy snow, with no doubt being sprayed by the icy sleep from the passing bus. On the 31st of December, 1962, the Times reported, Roads were impassable at hundreds of points. Many towns and villages were cut off. Railways were out of action at many places or struggling against long delays on other sections. And the airports were unable till late in the day to offer landing or takeoff. But the country was not crippled. Snow plows were deployed and the trains, mostly steam engines, got through somehow. This photo from the Guardian newspaper shows the RAF flying supplies by helicopter to stranded families in the deep snows on isolated farms and the Langmere Hills. Maureen Dow remembers that winter well. It was the year that her little baby brother was born and her family had just moved into new flats at Cape Lock Court, Oxcombs. She remembers the snow well, she says, my first vivid memory of life in the flats was standing up on tiptoes and bare feet on the warm underfloor heated tiles, looking out the window at the snow dancing in the huge park and listening to the wind whistling and feeling so safe and secure. Maybe that's why the high rise flats still evoke that feeling of safety, even allowing for the fact that the lovely warm floor kept cracking and cost a fortune to use. It was made of the new wonder material, asbestos. My brother was born in April, and being on the first floor, we had no lift, and bumping a big pram up two flights of stairs must have been hard work. This was one of the reasons you relied on your neighbours so much. Everyone was in the same situation, and everyone mucked in to make life easier. I grew up calling our next-door neighbours Auntie Mo and Uncle Eddie. Lifelong friendships were formed by both children and adults. There's a view today that some head teachers ought to close the schools at the first sign of a snowflake. That wasn't the case back in the 1960s. During the big freeze, it was common for children to walk or sledge to school. Today, there's more of a reliance on the car. This photo is from 1947, so not taken during the big freeze. However, despite considerable amounts of snow on the ground, these children are jollying along in the snow, and the boy in only short trousers the photo is from a collection of Dean Village Memories and was donated to Edinburgh Collected by Gail Featherstone Hall, who is the young lady in the middle front of the photo. The children in the back are Norma Ridgway, Margaret Johnson, and Avril, Gail's older sister. And in the front is Robert Bain and Duncan Crowder with Gail in the middle. In fact, rather than coddle children and keep them housebound, it was more likely that they'd be put to work, as we see in this photo. We don't know the name of this speed boy, but the photo of him working away, clearing ice from the rail steps, was taken in 1965 in Oxkings. Here's a rambunctious crew. Who can't resist a day on the sleds when the snow comes? This photo shows a group of boys out on a cold winter's day, some still in their school uniforms, and yes, one or two in short trousers despite the cold. This photo was taken in 1960 and shows children sledging in the Oxkings area, playing in the fresh snow. Of course, snow play is not just for the children. This 
photograph shows three young men, George, Neil, and James, making the most of the hard winter of 1962. James, or Jim to his friends, remembers this day well. He says, it was a very hard winter with deep snow. So much so that we were able to ski over a totally hidden five bar gate. We used to walk the area. We skied from Hill Inn, before the dry ski slope, to Flottersund, skiing back along the Carlops Road, which was blocked by snow. The skis were hired from Tiso's in Rodney Street, opposite the Ritz Cinema. We three were members of the Milton Amateur Wrestling Club at Milton Street, Abbey Hill. George wrestled in the Melbourne Olympics in 1956, and he's now a lone sailor, twice around the horn single-handed, Perth, Australia to South Queensbury. And another group with a relaxed approach to winter sport. These young people are from Broughton High School, and the photo was taken on a ski trip to Austria in 1960. Patricia Anderson, who donated the photo, says of her classmates, no smart ski suits. Nobody knew what an anorak was. Mothers bought woolen trousers and knitted sweaters and provided warm jackets. The boots we hired at the ski slope. We had no previous skiing experience, so we all fell over for the next two weeks. Travelling there consisted of a train from Edinburgh to London, another train from London to Dover, ferry from Dover to Calais, overnight sleeper train from Calais to Basel, another train through Switzerland to Austria, and finally a bus up a single track road with cliffs on one side and a sheer drop on the other. Back to the winter of the Big Freeze, 1963, and here are two girls who made the most of the snows in that cold winter. This photo from the garden is of two girls in Aberdeen posing in their front garden with a massive 17 foot snowman that they had just built. How did they ever find a tie and a hat to fit? A rather more modest, but still memorable snowman. This photo was taken in 1961 and was donated by Isabel Guthrie. The photo is of Isabel herself with her daughter Sinead making their first snowman together. The winter of 1961 is not as well remembered for snow as the big one the next year, but there was still snow in the Christmas week and again in March, especially in Scotland. Another 1960s snowman, or snow blob really, and a rather confused looking dog. Two of the girls sitting atop the mound are Laura Wright and Fiona Clark. Unfortunately, we don't know the name of the third girl or their shaggy dog's name either. If you recognize either of them, please do get in touch. The photo from 1966 was taken in the front garden at 32 Brain Dean Heights, right near the entrance to the Braid Hills Trails and Seven Hills Viewpoint. So there was sure to be plenty of snow in this area that year. Still, it isn't all fun and games when the snow comes to Edinburgh. This is a photo from a newspaper clipping which Stuart Ladlaw donated to Edinburgh collected. It shows his father, Frank, and an unnamed woman, clearing the snow from the pavement in front of H. Spencer the Jeweler Shop, which in 1951, when the photo was taken, was the top of Leith Street. It was still there a decade later in the famous winter of 1963 when the buses stopped because of the mountains of snow. Stuart remembers how his father Frank would walk the long way to work from Calder Drive in Sight Hill all the way to Leith Street at the top of the walk. And this photo shows us why the buses stop when the snow comes to Edinburgh. We don't know where in Edinburgh this photo was taken, but these two men have the hard task of pushing the bus through the snow and up a hill. This photo was taken in 1935 when Edinburgh was served by the Edinburgh Corporation Transport, which had been renamed from Edinburgh Corporation Tramways Department just a few years earlier, in 1928, and which included a sophisticated network of trams and buses all across the city. This is, of course, the same company we love and know today as Edinburgh Lothian Buses. And here's another lovely snow laden image from the top of Leith Street. This one from the Scotsman, and taken a couple of years after the big freeze shown in the earlier photos. It isn't perfectly clear, 
but it looks like there's a window cleaner with a ladder and his bucket standing under the Thompson's shoe repair sign on the left. It takes some dedication to clean outside windows in the midst of a snowstorm. Staying at the top of Leith Street, where so many of our photos from today were taken, this is a photo taken at the famous Jerome's Photography Studio at 70 Leith Street. The photo was taken in 1930 and shows two-year-old Shona Gunn clutching a small toy dog and bundled up in her winter woolies. She remembers, My father had been instructed to take me to Jerome's, as families did in our youth, on a yearly visit to record our progress. Being a man, he forgot to take off my outdoor garments. I guess mother was not amused. I'm standing on the famous Jerome's chair. And two more weans bundled up against the cold. This photo from a cold winter's day in 1960 shows Marjorie Turner and her older brother Douglas visiting the castle where, as everyone knows, it is nearly impossible to escape the bitter cold winds whipping against Castle Rock. But at least Marjorie is dressed for the outing. She remembers, my brother and I are looking very smart and snug, Douglas in a very well cut suit and me wearing a coat, hat and mitts. This photo was donated by the Dean Village Memories to Edinburgh Collected. And a final photo of a wee lassie bundled up against the cold. This is another photo of Gail Featherstone Hall, who was the young lady in the photo of a group of children from Dean Village playing in the snow. This photo was also donated from the Dean Village Memories on Edinburgh Collected. Here she is on a day trip to Craman well wrapped up against the winter wind and standing with a lovely view of the Firth of the Forth behind her. Of course, winter is inseparable from the festive high of December, and we leave you with a delightful photo of a brother and sister unwrapping presents on Christmas morning, 1955. These children are Joan Dugan and her brother Stuart, and the photo was taken by their father, Jazz Bryden, who is a freelance photographer for the evening dispatch. What are your memories of winter? Do you remember the hard winter between 1962 and 1963? If so, we would love to hear your memories and see your cherished photos. So please do leave a comment below or get in touch through our social media platforms. Or better yet, come by for a visit. Our Wee Museum of Memory at Ocean Terminal in Leith is now open. Do stop by soon.